Hi, it's me again, Nico, and you know what I hate? Coins! I truly dislike to collect those shiny yellow things that are scattered everywhere in the Mushroom Kingdom. And this is why I have decided to embark on a crusade against those pesky coins. My first challenge was Super Mario 3D World, and amongst all the other ones I did later down the line, this first one was definitely the hardest to complete. Well, that was until I decided to try Super Mario 3D Land for the Nintendo 3DS. The rules are simple. There's a coin counter that sometimes appears on the top left corner of the screen. We will try to keep this at zero. I must first start off by introducing a couple of game mechanics in this game that will prove to be quite a problem in this quest. Just like in Super Mario 3D World, if you jump on an enemy in Super Mario 3D Land, it turns into a coin that you automatically collect. So jumping on an enemy is out of the question. Every level in Super Mario 3D Land features three of those star coins, and although they do not count in my total coins, I'll try to dodge them for the fun of it. You gotta be careful for some coins that are hidden in bushes, in flowers, there are some invisible blocks containing some, so everything in this game is basically out to give you coins. When grabbing the flagpole at the end of each level, you must absolutely grab the very top or else the game awards you between 1 and 10 coins depending on how high you grabbed it. Grabbing the very top gives you a 1-up, which is what we want instead of those coins. But even if you grab the top of the pole, there is still a huge problem. The game transforms the remaining seconds into coins. The game only awards you coins for every 10 remaining seconds, so if you got under 10, you get 0 coins. You will have to wait next to the flagpole for the remaining seconds to be under 10. We are ready to tackle this epic quest and try to rescue the princess without being able to pay for her popcorn at the movies. Here we go! World 1-1 is the introduction level and it does a good job at showing you the basics without being too difficult. The true difficulty comes from grabbing the very top of the flagpole without accidentally grabbing a coin. World 1-2 is next and will introduce you to the Fire Flower power-up, which will prove to be quite a useful item as any enemies defeated by a Fire Flower turns into a coin. But this coin remains where the enemy died, so you don't automatically pick it up. The end of this level is over here inside this pipe and sadly there is no way to enter it without grabbing at least one coin. Wow, is this quest over already? No. Cause luckily, and thanks to my buddy Mero, I learned that there was a secret exit that you can access by jumping up here. Doing this saves you from collecting any coin and teleports you directly to World 2-1. World 2-1 is one annoying level that has tons of ninja coins hidden in bushes, in flowers and pretty much everywhere really. Make sure to kill all of the Goombas and Piranha Plants at the end before grabbing the flagpole and you're gonna be okay. World 2-2 is located underground and features poison water everywhere, which leads to some pretty scary jumps. When you kill those three Goombas near the flagpole at the end, make sure to activate your aimbot, because if a fireball touches one of those flowers, it will turn into a coin that you automatically collect. Come on! World 2-3 is actually the very first easy level in this run because there's basically no coins at all. Don't be afraid to use those propeller boxes as they turn into a 1-up when grabbing the flagpole and not a coin. World 2-4 doesn't feature that many coins, just time your jumps with the flipping platforms and you'll be done in no time. World 2- Flying Ship is up next and it is our first auto-scroller level in this run. Luckily, there's not a lot of coins on those airships, so you'll reach Boom Boom in no time. Just like in Super Mario 3D World, the boss fight is really easy. Just make sure to run as far away from Boom Boom as you can after giving him the final blow as he will explode into a dangerous pile of coins. Be patient near the flagpole, grab it when the time is below 10 seconds, and on that note, World 2 is done. World 3-1 is a pretty easy level with not a lot to talk about. 
there's one of those block enemies near the end, which kinda scared me a little bit, because remember, if there's an enemy near the flagpole when you grab it, it turns into a coin. But I think the game thinks this block dude is not an enemy while it's sleeping, as no coins were given to me when I grabbed the flagpole. World 3-2 is our first underwater stage and it does feature a couple of scary parts, especially this one here with the two golden rings, but if you crouch down and hug the wall on top, you'll just barely fit in between and you'll be good. World 3-3 doesn't have a lot of coins, which is always good. It does, however, feature those platforms that fall down two seconds after you walk on them. And all of the platforms near the flagpole at the end are made out of it, meaning that you won't be able to just relax while waiting for the timer to go down. You'll have to keep walking left and right for more than four minutes. Wow. Be patient, be ready, and this level is a thing of the past. World 3-4 is our first snow level, and is actually pretty relaxing as it doesn't feature any dangerous coins. World 3-5 requires 15 star coins to unlock, and since we're not collecting those, we can just skip it. World 3 Ship is next and does feature one very tricky part where you want to run super fast to avoid getting hit by those big spike pillars, but the game is evil and put a single coin on the platform there, which you have no time to see on your first try. Why are you so evil, game? Come on. Defeat Boom Boom, grab the flagpole, and World 3 is officially done. Welcome to World 4-1, which isn't the most difficult level you'll beat, but I suggest having a fire flower ready for those piranha plants on those moving platforms and for those beetles near the end of the level. World 4-2 requires you to bounce from the bottom to the top. Luckily, there's not a lot of coins above you so you can bounce without being afraid, that is, until this bounce pad at the end, just forget about using that one, like there's a million coins around it. But use a couple of well-timed wall jumps and you'll be able to get to the top in no time. World 4-3 requires 30 star coins, so just like 3-5, we have to skip that one. World 4-4 is our first ghost house and it does include a generous amount of coins, but none that are difficult to dodge, so you'll be this one in no time. World 4-5 is an easy one for this quest, as you won't find a lot of coins. Grabbing the top of the flagpole might be a little bit tricky, but use those green switches and you'll be okay. World 4-Ship has this part here full of dangerous coins that are pretty difficult to dodge, and sadly you can't just glide out of the danger because there's an invisible wall that prevents you from coming back if you do so. Luckily for us, there's a hidden passage that you can use to skip this entire problematic section. Fight Pom Pom, dodge her coins explosion, and we are done with World 4. Yes, you've heard that right, we are halfway through the game and we still have no coins. Hopefully, World 5 will be gentle with us. Maybe I shouldn't have jinxed myself, because World 5-1 is actually pretty tricky, especially this elevator part here. There's only one coin in the middle of the screen, but as enemies appear from below you, defeating them with a fireball makes more coins appear, and then there are those spiky balls that turns into coins upon colliding with the bigger ones. Yes, this part was pretty tricky. The second problem comes from the fact that grabbing the top of the flagpole seems to be impossible over here. Basically, you're supposed to get in the cannon, to go through that golden coin ring, and then you'll catch the top of it. But you know, we don't want that coin ring. But grabbing the top from over here is impossible because you won't be able to jump that high. Luckily for us, I learned geometry at school, so I tried to aim at the cannon just a little bit above and it should theoretically still work. And would you look at that? It did. Stay in school kids, it's important for Mario coinless runs. We did it. World 5-2 is next, and this one is actually going to be quite a problem. So as you can see, those three coins are right in the way you're supposed to go. 
the little openings are so tight that no matter what I tried, I couldn't fit in there without collecting a minimum of two coins. And then, the rest of the level would prove to be quite a problem too. No matter what I did, I couldn't complete this level without collecting a minimum of four coins. I tried many jumps, many strategies, going there as tiny Mario, going there as tall Mario, I tried so many jumps over and over again, and nothing I did was actually working. Hey, it's uh, Sick Nico from the future. Uh, I'm editing this video, and while I was doing so, Sieve Gaming posted a similar one where he managed to do it getting only one coin. But um, props on him, but get ready for this because I'm about to beat you, Sieve. An hour or two later, I just got mad and started killing Mario on purpose at this part out of pure anger. I know, I know, that's not a good thing to do, but you know what, after killing Mario over and over again, the game eventually gave me a special item to try to help me. And eventually, after dying even more, a new block appeared containing a special P-Wing, which teleports you right to the end flagpole. Do you see what I see? I see a potential way of skipping this level without collecting any coin. I quickly hit the reset button and started losing lives on purpose on this fire thing over here. Up until the game gave me a P-Wing. Using it, we can get to the end, skipping this evil stage and all of the coins that we would have taken. And this level is now done. Is it cheating? I don't know, the rules just said we want to complete the game without collecting a single coin. It never said we couldn't use the help provided by the developers at Nintendo, so I'd say this is pretty legit. World 5-3 needs 40 star coins, so we can't do it. World 5-4 contains many big moles, so make sure you have a fire flower in stock to defeat them. There's also a couple of tricky jumps, so having a tanuki suit is also mandatory over here. World 5-5 is next, and at first it doesn't look that difficult. You basically just grab one of those propeller boxes and move to the end of the level. But what have we got here? A couple of flying beetles around the flagpole. This proves to be a problem, as the red one turns into a coin when you grab the flagpole. You sadly cannot use your fire flower when having the block on your head, so my next strategy was to go with a tanuki suit, then to switch to the fire mario power up once near the flagpole. Then I would kill the beetle, switch back to tanuki, and grab the pole. This was a perfect plan. Except it wasn't, because of that red beetle. No matter what I did, and no matter how good my angle seemed to be, I couldn't get that fireball to land on that red beetle. I guess it has something to do with the travel distance of the fireball before it disappears. But unfortunately, I couldn't defeat that beetle, and even using our buddy the Super P-Wing, we just get teleported near the flagpole and the red beetle still transforms into a coin. As far as I can tell, this level is going to be the end of us. We now have one shameful coin. That is sad, I know, but we won't let that one coin ruin our mood, okay? Let's try to finish the game without collecting some more, shall we? Hey, Nico from the future again. So, a username xepicprodigy99x actually posted a video showing that it is indeed possible to do this level without collecting a coin. Look at the jump. Wow. I couldn't do that myself, dude. That was pretty insane. World 5 Dash Castle is next. Or is it? This castle requires 50 star coins and we have zero, but we cannot skip this one like we could with previous star coins locked levels. Haven't played this Mario game in years, I completely forgot the star coins were mandatory to complete the game. I'm such an idiot, dude. This quest was already painful enough. I actually had to go back to world 1-1 to start collecting star coins. Yes, I had to replay all of those levels we just did another time. Oh my gosh, this was 
painful. To be fair, I consider just cancelling this video at this point because of how mad I was. But eventually, I just went back, played them all, gathered some star coins, and arrived back at World 5 Castle with enough coins to open up this level. Ah, dude, you don't even know how painful it was. But just before we do this level, I also played the levels we skipped on our first run, so let me talk a little bit about them. World 3-5 isn't a very difficult level, however you will have to wait for a while in here before entering this box if you want to grab the top of the flagpole with less than 10 seconds remaining, as those platforms they move to the left and then they're gone, they never respawn. World 4-3 does feature coins that are annoyingly placed, but use your tanuki suit and you'll be able to dodge them quite easily. World 5-3 features tons of moving platforms, but all of the coins can be dodged without any big trouble. And on that note, we are back to World 5-Castle, which does not feature that many coins. It does feature a fight against Bowser, which isn't very difficult, and there you go. World 5 is officially over! Man, this world was so painful! It's crazy! I definitely deserve a break after finishing it! World 6-1 is a tricky level because there are so many cheap sheeps everywhere, and as soon as I got to the end of the level, I instantly had flashback from the ants in Super Mario 3D World. Those big fishes keep spawning over and over again, and sadly, grabbing the flagpole turns one of them into coins. Luckily for us, you can actually kill those guys with a fire flower. So here's the strategy that I use. I just went back to 1-2, got a fire flower, and then I started spamming my fireballs to kill the big fishes as soon as they spawn. I also placed my tanuki leaf to the right to be ready to grab it for the flagpole when the time comes. And no coins this time! Wow! I can't believe this actually worked! World 6-2 is up, and it's a very difficult level, as there are coins everywhere. A lot of tries later, I eventually managed to avoid all of those annoying coins and reach the end of this level. World 6-3 is a little bit tricky because it's a ghost house and the ending was particularly annoying. You have to stand on those teleporting platforms to get high enough to grab the top of the flagpole, but each of those teleporting platforms contains a coin, so you'll have to get to the very corner of the platform in order to avoid any coin. World 6-4 is all about timing your jumps right. It only features one tricky part which is over here, but a well-placed high jump is all that is needed. World 6-5 is super easy and there are no real tricky parts here. World 6-ship is also not that difficult, the only tricky part being this one over here where you must dodge coins and the spiky platform at the same time. Defeat Pom Pom and World 6 is now done. World 7-1 is super easy, as most of the coins can be easily avoided. If you hit that invisible block at the end containing a 1-up mushroom, make sure to grab it before grabbing the flagpole, because it turns into 10 coins if you don't. Oopsie! World 7-2 is pretty easy, as it doesn't feature a lot of coins, and the same can be said about World 7-3, which barely has any coins except for this part here, which looks way harder than it actually is. Just do a ground pound on the rope and you'll avoid everything. World 7-4 takes place in a big clock with moving platforms and cogs, and at first it's not that difficult, up until this part here where you're stuck in this little narrow space, which sadly features coins. I don't see any way of actually dodging those, and I even tried to wall jump from the front, but I couldn't get to actually make it to the high platform. If you enter the box, you get teleported over here. So you know, I tried to just glide using the tanuki suit, but the game prevents me from doing so by killing me. Sadly, 
I think this is one of those levels that we cannot complete without grabbing at least one or two coins. Hey, it's Nico from the future again, and Save Gaming kind of fixed that problem by finding a solution which requires you to do a bunch of wall jumps as small Mario. So yeah, my original plan was to use the P-Wing, but yeah, Save kind of fixed it. Thanks, buddy. Hooray! World 7-5 is a pretty easy level which does feature a couple of coins, but none that is truly in the way. World 7 Ship does feature a couple of tricky jumps needed to dodge coins, but after a couple of tries, you'll be able to do them easily. Make sure to have a fire flower if you want to enter this pipe to go fight the boss, because there's a mole that you need to defeat on top of it. After defeating both Boom Boom and Pom Pom at the same time, World 7 is complete! World 8-1 is the first level in this last world and luckily it's pretty easy and doesn't contain too many coins. The end of the level requires you to aim correctly using the cannon on top of the flagpole. World 8-2 has this one annoying part where you gotta hold on the moving pole while dodging coins, but that's about it really. World 8-3 is very easy and most coins are in plain sight and are easy to dodge. World 8-4 is a ghost house that for once isn't tricky or annoying, finally. World 8-5's difficulty doesn't come from the coins, but mostly from the fact that you must defeat that annoying mole that is located at the end of those swapping platforms. Once you manage to defeat it, this level is over. World 8-Bowser is up and it's not very difficult and doesn't contain a lot of coins. Dodge Bowser, hit that switch, and on that note, Princess Peach is finally saved and our quest has come to an end! W wait a minute, whoa, I got tricked, this is not the end, there's more to this world, wow, okay, didn't expect that. World 8-6 is next, and is actually pretty scary because of all the coins located on those moving platforms, but it's actually very doable. Next up is the real World 8-Bowser, the final one for real this time. It doesn't contain that many coins, as it's mostly just a level to build up the hype and tension for the final boss. Those cannons here are kinda tricky because you wanna avoid the golden rings and the red rings, but I mean just aim to the left to the right and you're gonna be good. Luckily, the final battle against Bowser doesn't contain any coins, so there you go. Bowser is defeated, the princess is saved for real, and we can now peacefully fly back to the castle. We did it guys! Is it possible to beat Super Mario 3D Land without collecting a coin? Yes, it is possible to do it using the P-Wings to skip some annoying levels and this very precise jump over here. Wow, we did it! This was by far the most difficult challenge I've done here on this channel, and you know what? Super Mario 3D Land actually features 8 more special secret worlds full of spooky coins. I'm gonna regret what I'm about to say, but if this video gets 10,000 likes, I will attempt to beat all of the secret worlds without collecting any coin. Why am I doing that to myself? Alright, a while ago when I posted my video about Super Mario 3D Land, I gave you guys a challenge. 10,000 likes and I would attempt the special worlds in that same game. Well, we got to the objective quite quickly actually. And I wasn't prepared for the goal to be hit so fast, so sorry it took so long. But here we are today. After beating Super Mario 3D Land, we unlock 8 new worlds with tons of new levels. So obviously, I suggest that you watch the first video before you watch this one if you don't want to get spoiled. You can do so by clicking the card on the top of your screen right now. Wow, what a card! Anyways, today we're gonna be playing all 8 special worlds in this game to see if we can get to the end without touching a single coin. 
The rules are simple. We want to keep this coin counter at zero. We don't want it to increase and to do so we'll have to avoid defeating enemies as they give out coins. We'll also have to wait patiently at the end of every level as every 10 seconds remaining on the clock before you hit the pole gives you one single shameful coin. We're not forced to grab any of the star coins in this quest but they are needed to open some of the levels later down the line. But the thing is you can technically have 999 star coins just by having friends send them to you over street pass. So for this run, they won't really be a requirement. Now, the special worlds actually work different than the normal worlds. You can actually play all of the levels in a single world as soon as you enter it. Meaning you don't have to beat the first level to play the second one, and you don't have to play the second one to get to the third one, and you get the point. The only requirement is that you beat the airship or the castle level at the end of the world to unlock the next one. That's it. This could prove to be helpful if one level was impossible as we could just skip it and try the next one. And now that everything has been set, it's time to play and see if we can beat those levels without touching a single coin. Here we go! World 1-1 is our first stop and this one will not be a huge problem. Basically, most of the coins are gained by defeating those spinies, so just avoid them really. Once you get up there, you'll need a fire flower to defeat those prongos that hang around the flagpole, because if there's an enemy near a flagpole as you grab it, it turns into a deadly coin. Wait for them to fall flat on their faces and then defeat them and this level is done. World 1-2 is up and this first level will introduce us to a new challenge, Cosmic Clone Mario. This shadow looking dude is following you and mimicking your exact moves, so you'll have to watch out for this guy. But the thing is, once you reach the end of the level, you have to defeat that enemy with either a star or the flagpole itself, and both those way give out 3 coins that you can't avoid. This level is sadly not possible. But remember, we can actually skip the level and avoid collecting the coins. World 1-3, it's pretty easy, just make sure not to aim directly at those gold rings when using the cannons to dodge potential coins and that's it. World 1-4 will only be possible if you have a tanuki suit as this part here has tons of coins, so you'll have to ground pound on the rope to then go around the coins. It's kinda tedious but it's easily doable. Make sure to defeat the boomerang bros near the flagpole and this one is done. Welcome to World 1-Castle, and hopefully this one will be possible, because remember those castle levels are the only one we cannot skip in this quest. Oh, would you look at that, it's Luigi! Can we save him without touching a single coin? Well, yes, actually, and it's super simple. Just make sure to grab some clocks along the way and use your tanuki suit to dodge those two pesky coins near the thwomps, dodge Dry Bowser's blue fireballs, and there we go! World 1 is done, Luigi is saved, and now we can move on to World 2. World 2-1 is our first auto-scroller level, yay, I love those. The biggest challenge here are those plants that spit fireballs, and the ending part has tons of flowers all over the place. Some of them contain coins, so obviously you'll want to stay as far away from those as possible. World 2-2 can be scary because of the time limit, you cannot waste a second, and you'll need to grab some clocks along the way, sometimes they are super close to some coin rings so be on the lookout for that. But now here's the thing, at the end of this level there are those plants that contain coins and although you can easily dodge them with a tanuki suit, for some reason every time I grabbed the flagpole I was given a single coin. I don't know where it comes from, I tried many strats, I tried grabbing the pole from all over the place but I just get a coin, I can't explain. So if someone knows, please tell me in the comments, I beg you, like I'm really confused right now, please explain why this level is broken. Anyways, let's skip it. World 2-3 takes place on those arrow platforms. My tip here is to stay really close to the edges of the moving platform to dodge the coins as they're all located in the middle lane. Thankfully, they can be all avoided if you stay close to the corners. World 2-4 is up and this one wants you to use those propeller boxes to get as high and as far as you can. But there's this problematic part here. 
Technically, you're supposed to bounce on those Goombas to get upward on those wooden platforms. But sadly, jumping on a Goomba will give out a coin, which isn't what we want. I tried to land on the very edge of those platforms there, but no matter what, I always grab a coin. I thought this level was impossible, but I ended up finding one heck of a strategy. If you run super fast from up here and glide using the Tanuki suit, you can actually get to the wooden plank only to get around it and then wall jump while dodging the coins located super close to you. It's insanely difficult to pull off, but it works! This level can be done! Hooray! World 2-5 only has one difficult part, and it's this part here where there's four coins on those four platforms. Just use a Tanuki wall kick to get up there and you'll clear it in no time. World 2- Airship is next, and this one is actually super easy with a Tanuki suit, as there ain't a lot of coins. Grab the flagpole and there we go. World 2 is complete and we still have zero coins, yeah! World 3-1 is up, and it contains a lot of platforms on those pendulums that keep swinging left and right. There's pretty much a coin on every platform in here, but it's always located right in the center of the platform. So all you need to do is to live on the edge and make sure to stay as far as you can from the middle, and you'll be all good. World 3-2 contains those cube platforms that spin around. It's not a very difficult level though, just be prepared to waste a lot of time on that green cube near the end waiting for the clock to be under 10 seconds, allowing you to finally grab the flagpole. World 3-3 is actually quite easy and doesn't contain a lot of coins. Jump from rope to rope and you'll be done in no time. World 3-4 actually contains no coins at all, just avoid those spiky logs and reach the end and that's it. World 3-5 brings back those platforms that appear and disappear with the beat of the music, but just like the previous level we just did, it doesn't contain a single coin, so keep calm and finish the stage and you're good. World 3- Airship is scrolling automatically and at a pretty fast pace. The first couple of boats are pretty easy, but you'll soon reach this one, which contains a lot of coins and some fire things. But the biggest problem comes from this jump over here. You'll absolutely need a Tanuki suit to make it. But then this level will be complete. Let's now check out World 4, shall we? World 4-1 is taking part on those moving yellow platforms. Basically, there's gonna be a lot of enemies that are going to try to defeat you, so either avoid them all or just grab a fire flower to defeat them before they get to you. Obviously, killing them will place dangerous coins on the platforms, so you'll have to watch where you walk. Use a wall jump at the end to reach this top platform to make it move, and then it will allow you to grab the top of the flagpole. World 4-2 is taking place in a haunted house, which is scary enough, but then, uh oh, Cosmic Clone Mario. Remember that those levels cannot be cleared without collecting three shameful coins, so we're gonna have to skip that one. World 4-3 is actually a very easy level that doesn't contain a single coin, so just make sure not to jump on a bullet bill by accident and you'll be done in no time. I know I told you that we can jump on any enemies or else we get a coin, but in World 4-4 the rules have changed. You actually need to jump on the Goombas to gain some time and get to the end. This green platform does contain a couple of coins, forcing you to sidestep to dodge them, but besides that you'll finish the level real quick. World 4-5 is a very easy level, and the only part that proves to be a tiny bit challenging is this one over here, but just go all the way to the back and you'll be able to wall jump and dodge those ugly coins. Make sure you have a fire flower ready for World 4- Airship, as this is what awaits you on the other side of the green pipe over here. Yup, tons of enemies ready to attack you. This will actually be the recurring theme in this level, enemies that you must defeat with a projectile attack. Defeat Boom Boom and Pom Pom and stay as far as you can from them as they explode into evil coins when defeated. This final boat is kinda weird with the flagpole being in the middle here, but basically just charge your jump, wait on this question block until the time is right and then you will complete World 4. 
World 5-1 awaits, and in this one, jumping will flip those platforms over, so just make sure to dodge those big spiky balls. But besides that, no coins are going to be waiting to ruin your day, so no worries. World 5-2 is next, and would you look at that, a cosmic clone, big oof. It's a shame too, because this level doesn't contain a single coin, so it was totally possible to complete. But hey, because of that cosmic boy, we'll have to skip this one. World 5-3 features those green arrow platforms, and if you remember anything about those, it's that you never want to stand in the middle of them. Stay close to the edges and you'll dodge all of the gross coins. I gotta admit that this part can be quite scary at times because of the fire torches, but hey, if I can do it, so can you. World 5-4 is divided into two parts, and this first one won't prove to be much of a problem if you have a tanuki suit. I have to admit that this second part, which scrolls up, is very technical, as you can't really stand on the middle part of these cookies, because if you do, you'll grab a coin. It looks really easy, but trust me, walking left and right without grabbing any coin is quite the challenge in Super Mario 3D Land. Clearly, this game was not made for 2D segments like these. World 5-5 is a tricky ghost house. You see, technically you're supposed to enter the box next to a coin to know where to go, and at first this is quite easy, but this box over here is quite the problem. What seemed to work every time for me was to use the tanuki suit to slowly glide behind it. You just barely fit without touching the coin and that works. It's a very precise jump you have to make. And you know the worst part? You gotta do it twice as there's another box super close to a coin again. Keep trying and practicing and you'll finally clear this one. World 5 Dash Castle wants you to jump on Goombas to get enough time to clear the castle. Most coins are located in places you can easily avoid, so this one is easy and World 5 is now completely done. Since we still have no coins, let's move to World 6. World 6-1 shouldn't be a problem, as you can actually skip most of the level with the propeller bucks. You don't even have to go inside the big tower to get to the top. How easy can this be? World 6-2 doesn't contain any coins, so just hop on those falling platforms until you get to the end and there you go. World 6-3 is a little bit tricky, featuring some coins on those green switches, but you can easily skip those by using a tanuki suit or just by, you know, walking close to it. Once you reach the end, make sure to have a fire flower to defeat those three paragoombas and make sure you aim like a pro, because if you accidentally touch those flowers near the flagpole, you'll get awarded a shameful coin. Bummer. World 6-4 is home of our favorite cosmic clone ever! So you know what this means, this level will force you to defeat it and collect the three coins, so let's just skip it. World 6-5 takes place in a ghost house, which could prove to be spoopy, but basically the only challenge you're gonna have here is on this moving floor thing because there are coins around it, but just stay close to the middle and you'll be all good. World 6- airship will prove to be a problem right from the start. So you see, on this ship here, you have to go down there to proceed in the level, and as you can see, there are some coins on top of the green pipe. You can actually go next to the pipe without actually collecting those coins, but if you want to enter the pipe, there's no way of dodging a coin, as it gets automatically collected when going down. Now, there's a shortcut to the right over there to skip the green pipe. You can actually break those bricks, but there's another coin on the other side of the shortcut. Yet, yeah, that's not cool at all. In the first original 8 worlds, there was a similar level where we could skip all of this ship by going up and above with the tanuki suit. But I tried many times in here, and it seems that there are some invisible blocks up there preventing us from doing that strategy. Basically, you have to pick your poison now. The coin on the pipe or the coin beside that block. Sadly, this level will force us to collect a minimum of one coin. And since it's an airship level, we cannot skip it and get straight to world 7. Dang it! Hopefully this will be the first and last coin we'll ever get. 
In World 7-1, you have to kill those boomerang bros to get some time on the clock, but the thing is, if you jump on one of their boomerang instead of jumping on their head, you'll get a disgusting coin. Make sure to be careful with that and this level will be done. World 7-2 is up and as you can tell by this beautiful animation, we have our best friend the Cosmic Clone. Yeah, let's skip it. World 7-3 can be easily completed if you have a trusty Tanuki suit. There ain't a lot of coins in this level, you just have to be careful on the pendulums platforms and then you'll be all good. World 7-4 is next and would you look at that, it's a cosmic clone level, yay and this one features a giant cosmic clone. Seriously, look at how big this dude is. We don't have a star, so the only way to defeat this guy is to grab the flagpole, awarding 10 coins. Ouch, let's skip that one. World 7-5 features so many coins, it's gross, it's disgusting, look at all those coins, they're everywhere. You'll definitely want to have a Tanuki suit if you want to stand a chance around here. This level is really tedious, but trust me, if you time your jumps right and you're a little bit lucky, you'll be able to complete it. World 7- Castle does feature the return of Big Chungus Cosmic Clone. This level doesn't contain a lot of coins, guess Bowser spent them all on the previous stage. Anyways, once you reach the end of the level over here, something truly magical happens. The Cosmic Clone disappears! Yes! We can actually complete this level without any problem as the clone is now gone. Nice! World 8 is up and this will be our final stop today. But World 8 is different from all the previous 7 we did, cause in this last world you're forced to complete every level to move on to the next one. That means we cannot skip levels anymore and that proves to be quite a problem in World 8-1. This level is a cosmic clone level again. This part here requires you to turn into small Mario if you wanna go through the hole without collecting any of those coins. But sadly, as we grab the flagpole at the end, we're forced to grab three disgusting coins. Ouch. But let's not be sad, people. Let's go to World 8-2, which doesn't feature a lot of coins, but it does feature this troll box that automatically throws you out into the flagpole, forcing you to grab 10 coins because you didn't grab the top. Wow, that's pretty rude. Take this box instead and you'll be all good. Welcome to World 8-3, land of the cosmic clone again. Just why? Can we stop having this guy in every levels please? I'm begging you Nintendo. <sighs> once again this level doesn't feature any difficult coins and also once again the cosmic clone disappears at the end. So whew, we're all good, nice. World 8-4 is a pretty easy level that features a couple of coins here and there, but nothing you can't avoid if you're being careful. Plus, it doesn't contain a cosmic clone, so that makes me pretty happy. World 8-5 contains a lot of spinning platforms, it also contains tons of coins and a giant cosmic clone. Why do you do that to me Nintendo? I'm done, okay? I'm, I quit! I quit! Once you reach the end of this level, the cosmic clone doesn't disappear. And I was so sad when I realized that. Can you believe we're going to have to collect 10 coins in here? But then, here's what happened. There's a star over there with you. And if you use it to destroy the big cosmic clone, it blows up and shoots coins everywhere around it. But can you believe you can actually dodge them all? Oh my gosh, we actually found a way to defeat the big cosmic clone without collecting a coin! <gasps> Just know that if you defeat it and then go next to the flagpole awaiting the timer to go down, the clone actually comes back to life. No! So you're actually going to have to chill with the cosmic clone for a couple of minutes before you then grab the star and then the flagpole. Super annoying, but hey, anything that prevents us from collecting coin is better than collecting coins, so yeah. Welcome to our last stop for the day, World 8- Bowser. And in this one you must defeat the Hammer Bros to get more time, which is good. There ain't a lot of coins in here either, so this level is a walk in the park. Let's defeat Dry Bowser once and for all, 
And there you go, we have completed all of the special worlds in Super Mario 3D Land. So now the final results. Is it possible to beat the secret worlds in Super Mario 3D Land without touching a single coin? Sadly, no. We cannot do it because of that lonely coin we're forced to get in World 6-Airship and those three coins we have to get from that cosmic clone in World 8-1. This brings the total to four coins. We need a minimum of four coins to beat all of those levels. But hey, it's not a perfect score, but that's still pretty cool. I mean, what do you expect Mario to do with those four coins? He can buy some hot chicken for Peach. Nah, and that's a win in my book. Super Mario 3D World is definitely one of my favorite Mario game ever. I've beaten this game so many times and I even finished it with every character to get my 5 stars ranking on the menu screen. Heck yeah! So I've been watching Steve Gaming's video on how to beat new Super Mario Bros U without touching a single coin and it made me wonder if it would be possible to do the same in Super Mario 3D World. I know Mero SMM is trying to do the same task, and I've spoken with this guy before, but besides him and I, I haven't seen anyone that tried this on YouTube so far. Basically the rules are as follow. You must not collect any coins at all. You see that little zero on the top left? It must stay like that forever. The thing is, there's a couple of game mechanics in Super Mario 3D World that actually are making this challenge quite difficult. Basically, if you jump on enemies, you automatically collect a coin. If an enemy is standing near the flagpole as you grab it, it turns into a coin that you automatically collect. You gotta be careful for those ninja coins that are coins that appear out of nowhere. Plus, there are some invisible blocks that you want to avoid at all costs. Basically, this game wants to give you coins, so it's not gonna be an easy task. To progress in some areas of Super Mario 3D World, you need to collect green stars. So we're gonna have to try to collect as many as we can as we go through the challenge. Some of the green stars are only able to be collected by grabbing some green coins. And those coins count in our coins total, so they're a no-go. Same thing for the red coins, you don't want to touch those. There's also a very annoying detail that won't really show up in the video, but I did have to deal with it. Basically, if you mess up and grab a coin by accident, you cannot just back out of the level or jump down a pit. The coin still counts in your total, so the only way of not having that issue is to open up the Wii U menu, close the software, and launch it again, forcing you to see the loading screen over and over again. I also got a little bit paranoid as I was doing the challenge, so I made two copies of my save file just to make sure it's all Gucci. Now that everything has been explained, let's start this adventure and hopefully beat the whole game coinless. World 1-1 is pretty easy, you just need to make sure to avoid jumping on any enemies you encounter, but it's no biggie. World 1-2 is not hard, but it taught me some difficult life lessons. This is the part of the quest where I learned that if you don't see coins, you can still get coins. You see, in this bonus room, I threw a green shell and grabbed a green star. However, I still receive coins when leaving the bonus area, probably because the green shell was still moving and touched those coins. What a shame. I gotta be careful with that from now on. The ending flagpole can be a problem too if you don't get rid of the Koopa Troopas, so make sure you do, because remember, if an enemy is on screen when you touch the flagpole, it gives you coins. Remember you cannot jump on the Koopa or use the cat attack as it gives you a coin, so using a fire flower is the safest way to defeat that guy. In fact, having a fire flower with you is one of the most important thing in this whole run. World 1-A pits you against two charging chucks, but here's the thing, if you kill them by jumping on top of them or with a cat suit, you'll receive coins, so this is why you want a fire flower at all times. Defeating an enemy with a projectile power-up like the fire flower makes a coin pop up, but at least you don't grab it automatically. Keeping this in mind, this level is pretty easy. World 1-3 doesn't require any particular strategy, just avoid enemies, keep climbing with the cat suit and everything's good. World 1-4 is the first level where you get to ride Plessy. Plessy can actually jump on enemies without receiving coins, so don't be afraid to do it to collect more green stars. Oh, and just a tip here, if you're gonna try to avoid those pits to the right, don't go to the waterfall to the left, it's a trap full of coins. The rest of the level isn't particularly special. 
World 1-5 is next and at first I was afraid that pushing all those blue switches would kill those beetles and give me some coins. It does kill the beetles, but no coins are given, so we're good. The cannon at the end requires you to wait to make sure not to hit any of the coin rings, but it's pretty easy to do. The Captain Toad level in World 1 doesn't contain any coins, so it's 5 green stars that you can get without any danger really. With enough green stars in hand, the next level is 1 Bowser, and it doesn't feature any big problem. You just want to make sure to dodge the Goombas and wait for coins to disappear if you're aiming at getting the green stars. The battle against Bowser is straightforward as it contains no coins at all, and with that, World 1 is officially over, and we still have zero coins. Yeah! World 2-1 has a golden pipe, which usually means you're going to get a shower of coins, so it's a no-go for me. The rest of the level is pretty easy, and I was dumb and got some coins on the moving platforms, but a second try was all that was needed to complete it with zero coins. World 2-2 features a couple of coins on the pink platforms that you'll want to dodge, but besides that, not much needs to be said, really. World 2-3 is the first level with Bob the Piranha Plant, who was just announced for Smash, by the way, so good job guys, we made it, Bob is in! Since Bob loves to eat enemies and green stars, I was afraid he'd try to eat some coins too, but it seems Bob hates the taste of coins, so we're all good. This 2D section requires you to jump over some coins, which is pretty spooky, but it's not the biggest challenge you'll encounter. I was afraid Bob's big head would touch the coin there, so I left him to be sure. World 2-4 was a little bit scary because of coins on rotating platforms, but I had my trusty cat suit so I could climb on the walls and make sure not to hit any coins or any enemies. The pipe to get to the end of the level is surrounded by coins, which scared me at first, but it was an easy jump. To defeat the big Galoomba in World 2-A, a fire flower will do the trick. World 2 Dash Box is a little bit scary because you have 10 seconds to defeat enemies very quickly without collecting their coins, which can be quite a challenge. I can't really explain what happened there with the Koopa, it seems that I collected a coin when it fell down on the Koopa Trooper's shell, despite me being all the way over there, which I don't really get why, so if anyone knows just tell me in the comments, but whatever. The other enemies are not really tough, so it's an easy level. World 2-5 is up, and this one scared me a little bit, because you want to grab the double cherry to get the green stars, but having more Marios on screen definitely means more ways to grab a coin unintentionally, so be extra careful and you'll be good. This level doesn't have any tricky parts, so yeah. Now get ready for World 2- Tank. Oh boy, this one was fun. This level is an auto-scroller, which are just my favorites! Most of the wooden crates in this level contain a coin, so you'll need to avoid them at all costs. Here's the problem though, have you noticed how I got awarded a coin while minding my own business? Heck, I didn't even notice it at first and kept playing the level. After trying this again, I realized that this bullet bill was the one that did it. Yes, it doesn't matter if you blow up the crate or the bullet bill does, you still get a coin. So at this point, I realized I needed a way to stop the bullet bill from going to the crate easier said than done. You can block a bullet bill by standing in front of the cannon without getting a coin, but getting there before the cannon shoots the bullet bill is almost impossible. Trying to jump on a bullet bill will give you a coin for defeating it. I tried grabbing onto the crate as Cat Mario to block the bullet bill, but it was no use, it's just too fast. Jumping under the bullet bill will damage you, but won't stop the bullet bill, so it's no use too. I'm not gonna lie, I thought this would be the end of the coinless run at this point. But then I remembered that this game features touch controls that you can use to block enemies. And it does work on bullet bills. With that in mind, my plan seemed simple. Freeze the bullet bill as it leaves the cannon, put Mario in front of it and tank the damage. But that's easier said than done, because I was alone doing that, so holding down a bullet bill while moving and jumping requires way more fingers than I actually have. And there's these four coins next to the bullet bill, and touching those with the touchscreen will automatically pick them up. Great. I eventually managed to kinda do it, even though I grabbed the coin, but here's what happens next. While taking damage and flickering, a second bullet bill comes out of the cannon and hits the box off screen giving you the coin. What am I supposed to do at this point? 
Well, here's what happened next though. If you hold down a bullet bill and wait for a second one to appear, they both explode together and give out no coins. I knew I was onto something at this point. I was filled with determination and here's what my solution ended up being. Hold down bullet bill number one, wait for bullet number two to destroy it, face bullet number three and tank the damage. This way I should be in the clear, but you know what? I still receive a coin, even though the box was out of the screen. Literally 45 minutes of trying this new strat later, I figured out how to do it. My strategy was actually good, but to make sure that both the coin box and the bullet bill despawns, I'll have to run as far away from it as possible. So I stop bullet 1 and 2, I tank bullet 3, I run all the way while stopping bullet 4 and 5, and tanking bullet 6 only to keep running as fast as I can to despawn everything. It sounds overly complicated. And trust me, it is. <laughs> it was the biggest pain in the butt ever, but at least we can still go further on our quest. Defeating Boom Boom is pretty easy, and as long as you avoid this big circle of coin at the end, there's no biggie. Whew, World 2 is done, and I need a break. World 3 is up, and hopefully it won't be as tedious as that last level. World 3-1 is the first ice level, so you want to be careful not to slip on a coin by accident. Have a cat suit ready for World 3-2, because to avoid those coin and coin rings, you'll want to climb on the back wall, or you'll want to do a cat jump around the fence, which is a little bit tricky. World 3-3 is a haunted house, but it's not the most difficult level you'll play. Most of the coins can be easily avoided if you take your time. World 3-4 is pretty easy as it's so small. Just grab some green stars, run to the end, and that's it. You'll notice that sometimes I lose my cat suit and have it in the next level. I forgot to mention that I backtracked to World 1-1 and World 1-2 so many times during my playthrough just to grab back a cat suit and a fire flower. So if you're gonna attempt that, be ready to play these levels over and over again. World 3-A is a mini boss fight against Magikoopa, so just use the fire flower and you'll be done in no time. World 3-5 is an underwater level which will require you to make sure not to swim on any coins, but it's nothing special. World 3-6 is the famous Mario Kart level. The hardest part comes from having to run super fast and avoiding coins, but they're always in the center lane, so usually if you run close to the top or the bottom part of the track, you should be okay. I had trouble with World 3-7 in this part, where you gotta slide down the wall to avoid the coin rings, because I always fell down in the pit, but that's probably just because I'm an idiot. World 3-Captain Toad is just like the previous one, easy. World 3-Train was actually scary for me. It's an auto-scroller, it contains bullet bills and wooden boxes. At least this one's pretty easy, as the boxes do not contain any coins. Yes! Pom Pom, just like Boom Boom, is quite easy to defeat. Jump on her three times and then run all the way to a corner and hide from those evil coins. And on that note, World 3 is done. Or is it? We still have World 3-B to go, which is a battle against Histocrat. Basically, to defeat this guy, you must jump on his head. And I found out that if you do a spin jump at the correct timing, you can usually get on his head and damage him. If that fails, just wait until he gets a plate that doesn't have any coins on it and use it to jump on the head. He's gone, and now World 3 is really done. World 4-1 is next. The first level is pretty easy as you can jump on those big ants without collecting any coins. The only difficult part for me was this one here where you're gonna climb on the wall to circle around the coins. Make sure to have a fire flower on you for the last part because you need to kill the ants before touching the flagpole to avoid receiving some coins. Have a fire flower ready for world 4-2 if you want to make it far, because you must defeat those piranha plants to proceed in the level, but make sure to avoid the 3 coins they drop when dying. There is this part where you can either go down underwater or up there. I tried going up first. Mmm, bad idea. Everything was going smooth underwater until this part where I receive a coin despite not even touching it. Yeah, great. So for this part, you'd want to be Tiny Mario as his hitbox is smaller than normal Mario. As far as I know, this is the only possible way of going through that part without collecting a single coin. 
Once again, make sure to defeat the plant at the end to avoid receiving flagpole coins, and this one is done. 4-A is another minibus battle, but this one is easy, throw the boulder in the lava and that's it. These enemies don't give out coins, so no stress. World 4-3 is next and basically just requires you to time your jump like you would in a normal playthrough. Avoiding the coins is not a big deal. Pro tip, don't go in that pipe and do not hit that switch. Uh oh. World 4-4 is pretty easy too, except for that last part at the end where you keep bouncing on that moving platform and there's a bajillion little beetles. Use a very precisely timed cat dive to avoid them all and you won't get any coins. I don't know if the trampoline at the end actually gives out coin when touching the flagpole, but I just didn't want to find out, so I threw it in the pit. World 4-5 doesn't have any tricky part whatsoever. Just like pretty much all level in this world so far, make sure to have the fire flower to defeat the enemy near the flagpole. Bye bye fishy bobkins. World 4 dash house can be tricky because of the time limit, but you can easily avoid all of the coins if you pay attention to where they are. I gotta admit that this part with the wooden bridge was actually very nerve wracking, but it can be done, trust me. 4-B is another minibus, should we even talk about it? Use the fire flower. Next up comes 4 Dash Castle, and surprisingly enough, it's pretty easy. The only difficulty comes from collecting the green stars using those big boulders. You wanna make sure to carry them without accidentally touching a coin or a block. This world's boss doesn't give out any coins during the fight, so just fight him as you normally would. Just make sure not to stand next to the center of the arena after defeating the boss, and that's gonna be it. We are done with world 4. That was pretty quick. World 5-1 is up and this one has one really tricky jump. You see, in this level you need to collect those key tokens to open up the next section of the level. There's one token located on some clouds above these clear pipes. Sadly, you can't use those pipes as they contain coins, so you'll have to do this really precise jump here to land on the edge of the clear pipe and then jump on the cloud. I managed to do it two different ways. It was kind of lucky. I did it once with a spin jump and once with a very precise cat climb immediately followed by a jump. The second part of this level requires you to use Plessy to reach the end of the level. There's this ring of coins that is standing in the middle of the way. Jumping is a no-no, but if you bump on the enemy with Plessy, it will go away and you'll be clear to pass without touching the coin ring. Use the fire flower to defeat all enemies near the flagpole and your task is done. World 5-Captain Toad is, once again, pretty straightforward, so let's just not talk about it, whatever. World 5-2 is surprisingly easy, but make sure to have a cat suit for this part. You see, there's a clear pipe here which you can't avoid without climbing on the walls. Besides that, it's an easy level. World 5-3 is really tiny and really easy. Just make sure to kill all of the enemies with a fire flower because if you don't, they will give you coins even if they're out of the view. Welcome to 5-4, Sprawling Savannah. At first, this level doesn't look really complicated. I mean, there are barely any coins, so it's not really a problem. Except, here's the thing. There's these ants that are coming out of those pipes, and even if you defeat them with a fire flower, they come back instantly. The problem is that next to the flagpole at the end, there are two pipes with ants coming out of them. Sadly, even if you defeat the ants and proceed to the flagpole as fast as you can, another set of ants comes out of the pipe and you get awarded coins for those. There's no way of getting rid of the cannon or preventing them from coming out of it, even with touch controls. I've tried so many ways of doing this level. Trying to have the cannon all the way to the left of the screen, up, down, I even asked my buddy Mero SMM for help, but sadly, the way this game is programmed, you'll always get a minimum of two coins in this level. I tried playing this with another player, having one kill a set of ants, while the other is grabbing the flagpole, only to have another set of ants killed by the first one, but alas, no matter what, I always get at least two coins. I'm not joking guys, I have tried this single level for over 5 hours. 
I'm not kidding, I spent an entire day doing that level over and over and over and over and over and over and over again! But the results always are the same. It really saddens me to officially say this today, but the answer to the question is no. No, it is not possible to complete Super Mario 3D World without collecting a coin. Because of the flagpole mechanic, you can't get rid of these ants and no matter what you do, no matter how far to the right you go, no matter how you tilt the camera, nothing works. Seriously, I'm pretty bummed down that this level was the one to end the run. What's poppin' my dudes? Welcome to, once again, another video where coins are our worst enemies. You see, those pesky coins are located everywhere in my Mario games and I'm sick of it, which is why I play my games while avoiding them all. The first video in this coinless series I did was on Super Mario 3D World, and I suggest you watch that one first because today's video is a sequel to my first one. You see, after you defeat Bowser in that game, you unlock this wonderful rocket spaceship which leads you to special secret worlds. Now what we'll do today is play all of those levels individually to see if they're possible to complete without collecting a single coin. The rules are simple. You see that coin counter over there? We'll want to keep this at zero. We don't want any coins at all in here. And as a quick refresher, here's a couple of annoying mechanics in Super Mario 3D World that are working against us in this quest. First off, jumping on an enemy is a no-go because you automatically collect the coin it drops, even if you're super far away from it, it doesn't matter. The same can be said with cat suit attacks. In fact, the only mean of killing an enemy in this game without collecting a coin is via a projectile attack, you know, like the fireballs, the boomerangs, and you know, other stuffs that kill those enemies at a distance. Also, when you grab the flagpole at the end of every level, you'll want to make sure that all enemies are dead around you, because if you don't, they turn into coins that you automatically collect, and we don't want that. In Super Mario 3D World, if you unintentionally collect a coin, you cannot just back out to the main menu or lose a life, as you'll keep all of the coins you already collected. The only mean of fixing that mistake is to exit out to the Wii U menu and then launch the game and start over. It's long, it's boring, it's tedious, and for you it's good because it's not gonna show up in the video, so hooray, you won't have to suffer like I did. Now that everything has been explained, it's time to start the quest. Here we go. World Star is our first stop and look how beautiful it is. But we don't have time for that as we have to visit World Star-1. This brightly colored world is one tricky level to begin this quest with. There's a lot of those rotating cylinders that have coins on one side and enemies on the other one, meaning that you'll have to use the cat suit to climb on the wall and avoid everything. The second part of the level is pretty easy as you'll have to move left and right to dodge coins and enemies as plessy, but the path is so wide that this is not a challenge at all. This last part will be quite a problem though. You see, you're supposed to dodge those two skip squeak. Yeah, that's their official name. Then you have to grab on the balancing pole only to land over there where there's a lot of coins and you're supposed to dodge them all. You can't just grab on the pole and take your time, as going back automatically kills one of the skip squeak and awards you a shameful coin. Eventually, after an hour of trying over and over again, I managed to do it by using my cat suit to avoid the rotating cylinders altogether, and whoa, this level is done. World Star Dash 2 is home of the rotating platforms and the main difficulty comes from the fact that sometimes one side of the platform has a coin and the other doesn't, so you'll have to time your jumps correctly. The only difficult part in this level is over here because the platforms spin but the coins don't, so you'll have to be very careful, but once that is done, the rest of the level is a piece of cake. World Star Dash 3 forces you to run on those cylinders to make them spin and where the heck did this coin come from? Can someone explain what happened there? I'm watching the footage and it just doesn't make any sense. Anyways, if you have a cat suit, you can skip most of the level and avoid those annoying flying beetles that want you dead at all cost. 
World Star Dash 4 is a funny level where you must run after the flagpole that is trying to run away from you. Catching up to it isn't that difficult, but remember the rules. If there's an enemy on the screen while you grab the flagpole, it turns into a coin, which will mean that you must catch it at a time and place where there's no one around. Even invisible enemies count, yay! Uh -huh. Eventually, I grabbed it in a place with no enemies and this level is done. World Star Dash 5 is up, and it's a level based off Super Mario 3D Land. Yeah, I used to love that game. That was before I attempted to beat it without a coin. Anyways, the first part in this level can be skipped by climbing on top of those giant blocks. But for the second part, you must grab 5 key tokens to open up the box, and this can be done without collecting any coin very easily. The level is done, and now let's move on to World Star Dash 6, which is a very creative and original world where the camera is in a top-down perspective. You know, like an old-school Legend of Zelda game. Basically, this level scrolls slowly, and if you take your time and dodge the enemies and other hazards, you'll be all good. The only really annoying part is over here where there's a bajillion of those bees enemies that run at you at a fast pace, and you can't really defend yourself, as jumping on them gives you coins and that boomerang power-up might accidentally pick up a lonely coin when coming back to you. I eventually just gave up and took damage to reach the end of the level. Hey, it was the safe way of doing it. World Star Dash 7 is quite easy, as most of the hazards can be dodged without any major difficulty. I have to warn you to make sure to have a fire flower ready for the flagpole, because there's a Goomba Tower right next to it. If you want an easy spot to grab a fire flower, I recommend playing World 1-2, that is your best friend for that. World 1-1 is also pretty dope for an easy cat suit. Keep that in mind and let's move on. World Star Dash 8 is next, and it's a ghost house level without a ghost house. It's actually very creative. The first part of the level requires you to find some key tokens, which isn't a big deal. The second part has a couple of coins you'll need to dodge, but sadly, doing that is quite pointless, as there are those peepas that are dancing around the flagpole. There are two things that can kill peepas in Mario 3D World, a star or a light box. And sadly, none of those options are available to us in here. This level cannot be completed without being given disgusting coins when grabbing the flagpole. Hopefully, World Star Dash 9 will make us happy once again by being possible. This level is full of cannons and those moving platforms that you control by standing on the arrows. It's a very tricky level, but it's not because of the coins, it's just a difficult level, period. Thankfully, this level can be completed without collecting a single coin, and World Star is now done. Let's hop in that rocket and fly up to World Mushroom. World Mushroom-1 is actually a night remake of World 2-4, except in this one, every rolling hills are rolling super fast. Your worst enemy here is time. You barely have enough time to finish the level, so you'll have to collect those clocks, and some of them are placed directly next to coins, which prevent you from grabbing them. Make sure you have a cat suit to be able to dodge those coins over there, and if you're fast enough, this level will be done in no time. World Mushroom Dash 2 is actually a super easy level, where all you have to do is to grab 5 key tokens, and that's it. The problem? Invisible coin blocks, yeah, they're everywhere. Like, I get that this level is supposed to be easy peasy, but I kept hitting invisible blocks over and over and over again. Once you play the level enough, you'll start to actually remember where those invisible blocks are, and then this level will be done. World Mushroom Dash 3 is home of light boxes, booze, and grids you can climb on. Basically, my strategy here was to not take a light box at all and just use my cat suit to climb above and skip most of the level. This level is super short and isn't really difficult. World Mushroom Dash 4 is a 2D level which limits your movement options. You basically need to make your way over here and then defeat all of the Goombas in this humongous tower. I suggest that you get a Fire Flower to defeat them, as the boomerang the game gives you can come back and grab coins by accident. Use the Fire Flower and you'll be done in no time. 
World Mushroom-5 will be quite the aiming challenge as you'll need to defeat a lot of enemies with your Fire Flower to actually proceed in the game. You'll have to use the Wii U gamepad touch controls to open those doors and smash those gongs to proceed, but make sure you don't tap a coin by accident or else you'll have to reset the whole game. The rest of the level requires you to climb up this tower using the cloud platforms and this level is done. World Mushroom-6 is another ghost house level, and we know these levels contain undefeatable enemies. Hopefully, we will not see any of those unkillable enemies. Uh oh. This is a Noctumba, and this enemy cannot be killed easily. You can't use the cat suit, you can't jump on it, you can't use a fireball, you can't use a boomerang. No, the only way to kill these guys is using a ground pound attack which will automatically give out a coin. Or you can also use a giant mushroom which once again will give you a coin so who cares. These enemies are stationary so we can't just bring them out of the screen to try to grab the flagpole without them being near it. Sadly, this level is also impossible to complete without collecting a coin once again because of unkillable enemies near the flagpole. World Mushroom-7 is next, and this one is actually a level that doesn't contain that many coins in plain sight. Just complete the level like you normally would and make sure not to hit any of those question mark blocks, which may contain some coins, and this level will be done. On that note, World Mushroom is a thing of the past, so let's cross that very tiny bridge to reach out World Flower. World Flower-1 is actually a pretty easy level, which requires you to turn those blue switches into yellow ones by walking over them. Have a Fire Flower ready and defeat all the enemies that stand in your path and you'll be good. The ending cannon requires you to dodge the coin rings, but once that is done, this level will be a thing of the past. World Flower-2 is next, and the level isn't actually very difficult. Those four coins at the beginning can be avoided by swimming above them super fast. There ain't a lot of coins for the rest of the level, so you'll be able to reach the box over here. But sadly, as you can see, when you exit the box, you get thrown into a coin. Oopsie! This kind of thing happened in my Super Mario 3D Land coinless run after defeating the bosses. I had to use the Tanuki Glide to dodge those clocks back then. So you know, I went back and got myself a Tanuki suit to try that strategy in Super Mario 3D World. But sadly the game doesn't give you control of Mario until you land on the floor. So there's actually no way of dodging that little pesky annoying coin. Wow, this isn't cool. Come on, Nintendo. Why would you put a coin over there? That's just plain evil. World Flower-3 is next on the list and basically you cannot see anything in that level as it's dark everywhere. Make sure to have a Fire Flower to defeat the Piranha Plants to enter the pipes. Watch out for the three coins they drop when killed. The second part requires you to jump from platform to platform, and the Tanuki suit is actually pretty useful over here. Just make sure you don't waste any second on those rotating wooden platforms as they are full of deadly ninja coins. Make sure to keep a fire flower to kill the plants at the end of the level and you'll be good to go. World Flower-4 is a time-based challenge. You have 30 seconds to finish the level, which isn't enough at all, so make sure to grab those clocks on the way. To proceed in most of the section in this level, you have to defeat those fire bros, so keep a fire flower suit ready at all time. Those two coins near the pipe here spelt trouble, but luckily, if you approach the pipe from the top or the bottom, you'll be able to enter it without touching the coins. Nice! There's a fire bro near the flagpole, so you'll have to dodge those coins going up the staircase to use a fire flower to defeat it, and this level is now done. World Flower-5 is actually named Sprawling Savannah Rabbit Run. And the last time I went inside a level named Sprawling Savannah, I didn't have a good time. I'll get you one day, you ants. This version of the level is actually very easy, as all you gotta do is to run to the end of it. The only difficulty is the fact that you'll need a cat suit for this part here, as you know, taking the clear pipe is out of the question, because you cannot dodge all those coin rings. Climb on the clear pipe from the outside and then enter that one, kill those two enemies and this level is done. World Flower-6 is up and it's a ghost house. Uh oh, I mean ghost house were 
kind of tricky for this run. Hopefully this one will be okay. There's just a couple of ninja coins that you can't see on your first playthrough, but as you play and reset, you'll eventually remember where all of those bad pesky coins appear, and you'll be able to clear the level in no time. Finally, a ghost house we can complete. World Flower Dash 7 is up, and it's a really easy one. For once, Basically, you'll want to swim from the beginning to the end of the level while dodging a couple of coins here and there, but nothing dangerous. The only part that could have spelled trouble is this part with the golden coin rings, but just stand to the left of it and you'll be all good. World Flower Dash 8 doesn't contain a lot of coins, beside those in the background there, but they're no threat. Get to the end of the level like you normally would, and this level is a thing of the past. World Flower Dash 9 is super easy. Basically, grab any projectile weapon like the cannonball or a fire flower and then destroy those Goomba towers and then you'll clear the level easily. World Flower Dash 10 is really similar to the one we did previously. Basically, it's a top-down shooter where you won't want to shoot the enemies as they drop those deadly coins we're trying to avoid. Watch out for a couple of platforms containing ninja coins and this level will be easily finished. World Flower Dash 11 doesn't contain that many coins, it mostly contains spikes. Lots of spikes! As you can see, most of the coins here require you to go out of your way to actually pick them up, so if you stay focused and keep walking on the main path, you'll be all good. World Flower Dash 12 is the boss blitz where you'll have to defeat 5 bosses without any breaks in between. We have fought most of those battles when we were trying the quest in the first part of the video, so I won't spend too much time in here. Basically, when you defeat an enemy, stay far away from the coins they drop and you'll beat this level in no time. Now that this is done, get to that spaceship and we will make our way to World Crown. Champion Road is next. And if you ever played this game before, you know this is one tough challenge to defeat. The first part of the level only contains those coins over here, but you can easily jump from down here to dodge them. This second part doesn't contain any coins, so play it like you normally would and you'll be all good. This part here is very difficult because you need to have the timing right, but once again, there are no coins in here. 20 minutes later, once I finally reached the next part, I realized that to proceed you must defeat those three Magikoopas using a fire flower. But I didn't have any. Ah, uh, why didn't I remember that before? Uh, make sure to have one in stock, defeat those Magikoopas, dodge their evil coins, and you'll be able to move on to the next part. This next section doesn't contain any dangerous coins, so we can move on to the next one. Thankfully, this next part doesn't contain any coins, so grab the 5 tokens and there you go. This is the thank you clear pipe we've all been waiting for. Watch out because this final part contains tons of coins, so make sure to dodge them all. You wouldn't want to grab one after everything we've done so far. The special worlds in Super Mario 3D World are now complete. Is it possible to beat the secret levels in Super Mario 3D World without collecting a single coin? Sadly, no. Because of the 4 coins you get from those Pika in Star-8, that coin you get from this unkillable enemy in Mushroom-6, and that single coin you get in Flower-2. This gives us a minimum of 6 coins to complete all of those secret levels, which isn't perfect, but it isn't that bad. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury is finally out, and I do have to admit I have been playing it quite a lot. It's super fun to get back into 3D World, but with so much speed. Too much speed sometimes. However, I was even more excited trying Bowser's Fury, the brand new Mario adventure, and let me tell you, it's really good. It's really fun. And you know me, my name is Nico. And if you mix up those letters, you get coin. Those yellow, yucky things I despise. Well, today, we'll try to beat Bowser's Fury without touching a single one. The rules are simple. We are going to try to beat Bowser's Fury without touching a single coin. You see this lovely coin counter in the bottom left corner of the screen at all times? Well, we have to keep it at zero. 
Just like Super Mario 3D World, there are many things that give out coins in this game without you being able to do much about it. Defeating an enemy with a jump or a cat claw attack will automatically give out a coin, so we'll have to avoid doing that. To beat the game, you need 50 cat shines and you also need to defeat Godzilla Bowser. Okay, his name is Fury Bowser, but I mean, take a look at it. Anyways, before we jump into it, check out this graph. Ugh, only 25% of you people watching me are actually subscribed, come on. Can I get you to hit the sub button real quick? It takes a second for you and helps me out a lot. Now that everything has been set, let's just jump into it. Oh, uh, well Mario, I didn't expect you to literally jump into it, but oh well, it's done. The intro level is not very difficult if you stay in the main path, because some bushes and flowers can give out evil coins, so you'll want to avoid that at all cost. Watch out for Fury Bowser, as he's pretty mad and his fire pillars coming from the sky can make some evil coins appear. Grab this cat shine to defeat the dude for now, and you'll soon meet Bowser Jr., this game's sidekick. Apparently, Bowser is sick with rage and cannot be calmed down no matter what, so it's going to be your job to help Jr. bring Bowser back to normal. Why would you do that? Uh, I don't know. But anyways, you'll soon get asked how much Bowser Jr. should help you. And trust me, you'll want to select none. And here's why. Bowser Jr. will always be by your side for the entire adventure, and this mad lad can actually touch coins and collect them for you. What? Come on, Junior, what are you doing? Even worse, if you select a little bit of help, well, Junior will go out of his way to collect the coins for you. Come on, Junior, what are you doing? And if you select a lot of help, He'll even go and defeat enemies for you, hence giving you even more coins! What are you doing, Junior? Stop it! As you'll soon discover, your sidekick will also be your worst enemy for this quest. We'll always have to make sure Junior doesn't touch coins, defeat enemies, or whatnot, as there is sadly no way to make him completely get away and disappear. <sighs> Our first stop in this quest will be Scamper Shores, an island full of enemies and coins. And if you're thinking about hitting those question mark blocks to get some bar ups, well, think again, as they give out dirty coins. As you climb up, you'll need to move the camera all over the place to make sure Junior doesn't accidentally touch a coin. Getting to the top is scary, but possible, and you'll get your very first cat shine. Each island in this game has cat shards located all over the place, and collecting 5 of these will give out a shine. But thankfully, we can grab all 5 without touching a coin, but it does require a bit of skill. Catching Gooey Luigi will give out another shine sprite, and so will grabbing that key and opening up the cage. For the 5th and final shine from this island, we'll need Fury Bowser to use his fire breath to destroy the fury blocks, and as you can see, the shine is surrounded by evil coins. Thankfully, we can avoid all of those and grab the shine. Oh, wait a minute. Oh no, Junior is so close to the coin during the animation. Don't tell me he's gonna grab it after the cutscene, please don't. Oh my gosh, what are you doing, Junior? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this shine will not be obtainable in this quest because of Junior. Pounce Bounce Isle is up, and this level contains tons of springboards and a lot of golden circles that you must avoid in this quest. It's in this course that I learned that you can press the R button to send Bowser Junior away, and trust me, you'll definitely need to do this way more than you should. Because while Bowser Jr. is away looking for whatever, he can't actually catch coins for you. So yeah, that's quite helpful, let me tell you. Getting cat shines shouldn't be too difficult in this level, and using a fireball is still the most reliable way of defeating enemies in this game without collecting the dirty coins they drop. Now that we have 8 cat shines, I feel like it's the perfect time to fight Bowser using the Giga Bell. This new power up turns you into a giant lion Mario that can actually hurt Fury Bowser, and thankfully, as you can see, the coin counter is gone during the fight. 
and so are all of the coins. Yay! Defeating this first Bowser will unlock new areas to explore and also Plessy, this game's main means of transportation. Before we go visit the next area though, let's help out this poor mama cat that is crying because she lost her baby. But great news, the baby is literally right there. <laughs> Guess she wasn't looking that much. Fort Flaptrap is next, and it doesn't contain that many coins, so getting a few shines will be quite easy. We won't be able to get all of the cat shards though, as this one is surrounded by unavoidable coins. But that's okay, there's always other shines we can get anyways. Let's hop on Plessy, move Bowser Jr. away from coins and golden circles, and we'll soon reach Slipskate Slope, an island full of ice and also full of coins. Using the R button to move Jr. around can also be used to collect some cat shards that are too far away from us, and this will actually be quite helpful in this level, as there are tons of shards that are in very dangerous areas. Oh no! What are you doing, Junior? Oh my gosh, he's so annoying. <sighs> Hitting this switch will make a battle arena appear. And if that happens, well, make sure you have a fire flower power up lying around, or else you're in big trouble. Because jumping on enemies is not an option in this quest. While on Plessy, you'll sometimes see some big rings, and entering those will make a shine appear but far away, and you'll only have 20 seconds to go and collect it. Make sure to spam the R button to make sure Junior is not in your way, and you'll be able to get to the shine without him collecting one of those golden rings of coins. While we're back on Pounce Bounce Isle, we might as well collect extra shines by getting all of the shards, the key, and by having Fury Bowser blast away some Fury Blocks. Grab the Giga Bell and fight Bowser a second time to unlock even more new areas to explore, like the Claw Swipe Colosseum, a battle arena where you'll get to fight the mad lad himself, Boom Boom. And he's a cat now? Uh, that's very cool, but he's still as easy as he always was. Oh, and here's a pro tip. After you defeat him, make sure to send Bowser Jr. away in a corner as tons of coins will appear and Jr. will always be tempted to go grab them. Ah, <sighs> little brat. While I was on top of the Colosseum, I did see a giant bunny and catching it with Plessy will give out yet another shine. And now the Colosseum will get bigger, allowing you to climb and fight Pum Pum the Mad Lass. And she's a cat too. In fact, everything's a cat in this game, let's be real. Defeat her, move Junior away from coins, and you'll be able to swim on Plessy to catch yet another shine, making the Colosseum get bigger yet again. Time to climb back up and go for a Boom Boom rematch fight, except the floor is now spiky. It's still super easy to defeat him though. Use Fury Bowser to break blocks to get yet another shine, and then we'll be able to move to Trickety Tower, a very difficult level. The reason this island gives me so much trouble is because everything is invisible here. The shine looks so close, yet it is so far because you now need to climb up invisible floors and avoid tons of invisible coins that appear as you get close to them. And if Yuri Bowser wakes up while you're climbing, well, good luck with that. Eventually, I made my way to the shine and collected it, but it was quite a pain in the butt. Blast some Fury Blocks with the help of Bowser and we'll be able to move to yet another stage that hopefully will be more fun than the last one. Crisp Climb Castle is actually a pretty cool level with amazing music that reminds me of the Cap Kingdom in Super Mario Odyssey. As you climb up these big towers using the propeller box, you'll have tons of coins to dodge and you'll need to move Junior out of the way from time to time. This part here was very scary to me, with all of the golden rings, but it is thankfully possible to reach the top and get the shine. Getting all of the shards is also possible, and if you hop on Plessy, you'll get your 30th shine by going through this ring and avoiding the coins on the way. Time to fight Bowser yet again to unlock more areas. I also managed to get another shine by using this clear pipe cannon and getting on top of these clouds, which was actually quite easy. 
Risky Whisker Island is full of falling donut platforms, and you'll need to grab shards, chase gooey Luigi, and do all sorts of crazy shenanigans to get all of your cat shines. Heck, we'll even get to team up with Cat Bob the Piranha Plant in a quest to eat all of the fuzzies. Make sure not to fall down with Bob, because if he falls down in the water, well, he explodes and gives you one coin as a memorial. Well, thank you, Bob, for the gift, but it truly was unnecessary. <laughs> I then made my way to Pipe Path Tower, but as you can see, we have to go in clear pipes and they're all full of yucky yellow coins, so I didn't have much hope for this island. Thankfully, with a cat suit, you can actually climb on the tower itself and into this cannon to reach the top and get an easy shine. Just avoid the golden rings on the way there, though. Behind the tower lies another shine you can collect quite easily without a coin. And there's another bunny on the water that will give you a lonely shine for catching it. Guess what? We'll fight Fury Bowser yet again to unlock new areas and hopefully get all of the remaining shines needed to finish the game. Rolling Roller Isle is a nightmare. This stage contains rotating platforms, blocks and way too much lava. It's actually quite the stressful stage, if you want my opinion. Some shards are really hard to get, and we even need Fury Bowser to get some of the shines behind those Fury blocks. I went back around the map to get more shines afterwards, and stumbled around one I forgot in the Crisp Climb castle, but it was quite easy to obtain. Mount Magmeow. <laughs> what a pun. Okay, Mount Magmeow, on the other hand, is quite the challenging level, as you'll need to climb up this big tower and move on those arrow platforms, and this is way easier said than done, especially with Junior making your life way more difficult and trying to collect coins for you. Defeat Cat Prince Bully and avoid all of his coins after his death for yet another shine. Getting all of the shards will also reward you with a shine. Use Fury Bowser yet again to get another one, and then use Plessy to grab this one over there. With only two shines left, well, Bowser is mad all of the time now, so this is going to make everything way more difficult. Avoiding all of Bowser's Fury attacks while making our way on those blocks to get the shine is quite stressful, but it is possible. Catching a bunny under those circumstances is also quite the feat, but we did it. And now, with 50 shines in hand, all we need to do is to defeat Fury Bowser and we'll be all good. The first fight is still pretty easy and doesn't have a single coin on the way. And yes, I did say first fight, because once you defeat Fury Bowser, you still have a giant version of Bowser to take care of before calling it quit. This final battle is more of a final chase, as you'll be riding Plessy and trying to catch up to Bowser to hit those cat bells right into his face. With all of the golden rings, this will be easier said than done, but thankfully you can dive and jump with the correct timing to get speed with Plessy while avoiding the golden rings on the path, and here we g Oh my gosh, Junior, what are you doing? Yep, don't forget to hit R to send Junior away during the fight, or else you'll regret it, trust me. And there we go. We defeated Bowser and restored peace into the world. Oh, and also, well, here's Giant Cat Plessy. Yep, that's a thing. So, is it possible to beat Bowser's Fury without touching a single coin? Well, yes it is, it was actually quite annoying, but not because of coin placements or anything, it was annoying because of Junior! He is actually the main obstacle in this quest, he is not a sidekick, he is not a hero, he is a meanie! But anyways, once you figure out how to control the brat, well, everything's gonna be alright.